Floodcast. Floodcast. Get in the arena. All right, welcome. This is uh, another episode of the podcast that we called Floodcast. I'm here with Jason. What up, Will? 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 What's up? And we are back like a bad penny. And <laughs> we're going to continue from our previous conversation, our last episode ran a little too long, so this is part two. Part two. Part of duh. Bill of Rights. Duh. Bill of Rights part duh. And we're going to try to pick up where we left off. And if you missed that episode, it is important for you to listen to it to probably understand where we're going with this one. We probably will be addressing some of the same issues. But before we go any further, I just want to say subscribe, like, share, follow. Enter for your chance. By doing all these things, like following, sharing, all that, every single time you do that, every time, you are automatically entered into our March 3rd, 30-30 drawing for a brand new spacecraft slash space shuttle. Uh, we're guaranteeing at a value of at least 100 mil. Yes, and that's that's by 1950s monetary standards. No, no, 100 mil. Today's standards. Oh, today's standards? Okay. Yeah. Huh. I mean, we talked about this before. Mil is one-tenth of a cent bill. Yes. So 10 mil is a dollar. So 100 mil is a whopping $10. So I promise to have a space shuttle that flies that's worth at least 100 mil. And we will be giving this away live on air March 3rd. 3030. So mark your calendars because we've marked ours. It's on my, I put it in my, uh, I put it in my electronic calendar. Did you just send me an invite? You've got an invite. Okay. And uh, we will have an alarm that goes off one week before so we don't forget. Yes. That's when we will be building said aircraft. Possibly. We might just purchase <laughs> it. So make sure you subscribe, like, share, follow. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Anchor FM, Anchor.fm, Breaker. YouTube, wherever. Follow us Anywhere on... they haven't taken us off, we're on it. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, gab.com, parlor. And if you have any questions, comments, concern, email us flawedincle at gmail.com. Broadcast! All right, so we discussed Amendments 1 and 2 extensively in the previous episode. And we're going to pick up where we left off because even though 1 and 2 are the, the backbone, the they are very important in regards to the overall picture. It doesn't negate the fact that as an American citizen, you should know these. And we just want to quickly review them. So this will probably be a lot less heated, maybe, and a, a lot quicker. And uh, just, once again, this is education no purposes. Amendment 3, Bill? Would Amendment like 3. Read that one? Go for it. All right, I'll do it. Thank you. Third Amendment, Constitution of the United States. No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So basically what that means is that soldiers or the government or the military cannot commandeer your personal property for their use. And that was probably more important back, you know, in 1776 and that during that era when the Revolutionary War was more important for, for homes, but I, I would almost say that this, like you said, it's more property. Exactly, and I I would say in our heightened military, excuse me, our heightened political environment that we're currently in, this possibly would protect against anything in the nature of martial law. Martial this law. The, yes, martial law. Anyway, uh, so this is just to protect the, gov the government from commandeering your property. Could they take your property to build a base? Bet you they could. Sons of bitches. They cannot do that. It's con unconstitutional for them to do that. Which is important. Yes. Cause my dog's then again, if I've got my guns. There you go. Boom. Fourth Amendment bill. Do it. Number four. <clears throat> the right of the people to secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but non-probable cause supportedly by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person of things to be seized. This prohibits the government officials or authorities from entering your house, from taking your personal property without, re without reason for doing that. But if they, they can't come in unless there's been a warrant, unless there's been proper things submitted 
no authority should be able to come in your house and seize your private property without proper documentation. And that's very important. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is one uh, that's been going on for years now in this country uh, with police officers and traffic stops. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, searching probable cause. Um, and, and again, this is where the bay goes back and forth. And, and I know we're going to get into something here because I think it's important to talk about. I, I yeah. feel it. And, and, and I want to, but the reality is this, folks. Uh, I want to be real when I say this. There are bad police officers out there. 100%. There are bad teachers out there. 100%. There are bad politicians out there. There are bad parents out there. There are bad people out there. There are a lot more good police officers who are out there to protect you and to protect our towns and cities than there are bad. It's the truth. And, you know, a lot of the problems that happen are because of the lack of respect that we're teaching our children today. Absolutely. I've watched a lot of these videos. It's crazy how these young people talk, not just to police officers, a person of authority, and they are a person of authority, but adults in general. Uh, what the lack of respect is these days. Uh, but the reality is this. Those police officers that so many people talk about, police are bad, I hate police, we don't need police. If the police yeah. come straight from the end. <laughs> right? I mean, this is the reality. Again, uh, you've heard from me before. I've got five children. I've got a family of seven. And uh, I lock my doors at night and I set my alarm. And I do have my guns. But I'm counting on the sheriff's department and the police department and the state police to make sure that the bad people out there are, are staying away, that they're keeping them in check because uh, there are bad people out there. Uh, I'm counting on them to be the front lines of defense for me. I don't get upset when I get pulled over because I'm speeding. Um, I'm not trying to fight it because I broke the law. Um, does that mean that I've been in situations where I feel like uh, police officers treated me unfairly at a traffic stop? It has happened before where I don't think they treated me fairly. Um, I think it was total crap, but, but then on the other, on the other hand, there was times when you were maybe like myself pulled over and knew that you should not yes. probably be driving and they let you go cause you're a dumb punk kid. Yes. And there's also times that I speed that I don't get pulled over by the way. So, I mean, come on. Um, what I do know is that, um, I respect the police officer when he pulls me over. Sure. And I am courteous and I deal with whatever I need to deal with. And if there's an issue. I have gone to court to fight a ticket before. Um, that's what the system's for. Sure. I, li I like how my notes I have here. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the Fourth Amendment was intended to create a constitutional buffer between U.S. citizens and the intimidating power of law enforcement. So we, once again, are protected. Credible foresight on our founding fathers. We do have the idea or the notion that protects us that says... You cannot enter a person's property. You cannot seize their belongings without probable cause, without some kind of a warrant. That's a house, that's a car, whatever the case may be. And you're right. There there probably are a lot more people that get into the line of being a first responder, police, fire, EMS, so on and so forth, because they're probably more, de in my experience, are more decent type people that really do want to serve, and this is their avenue to do that. But there are bad law enforcement officers. So, Let's right. not label the entire law enforcement community. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. I mean, they do a lot of good, my friends. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of good. And then we got to focus on that. And yeah, do we need to weed out the bad apples? In society in general, yes. Not just, let's don't single out police officers. Um, really frustrates when that happens. They're, they're really there to protect. There are laws that protect us. That's what this amendment's for. It's to protect us. Don't hide behind it. I said this again about other, about the First Amendment. Um, if you're smoking weed driving on the road and you swerve and you get pulled over and you're going to get mad at the police officer because he smells the weed that you've been smoking, come on, man. Unless look, you have a Look card. at yourself in the, no, you can't nice. drive around smoking weed even if you have a medical marijuana card. Okay? You can't drink and drive. You can't speed. Okay? You can't break the law. And get, then get mad at the police officer for upholding the law. All right? Don't hide behind that. Part of the problem in this society today, Bill, is the fact that younger people refuse to take responsibility for their own actions. Again, 
I have five children, and they all play the same freaking game. It's always everyone else's fault. I would counter that by saying children only behave in the way that they're taught. 100% agree. Oh, I'm, so, not, I'm not with you. I mean, I'm not right, against no, you. I'm, I'm I, with you. Right, I know, but... You know, the, I don't know that there's going to be many kids or, no, or many listening. listening. So my point being is that it comes back down to, you know, responsibility. You're like, I don't want my dog crapping in my neighbor's yard. And when I see that happen, I discipline her. Right. So what I'm saying with this about the kids is, as a young kid, that's what you do. And it's my job as a parent to make sure that I raise responsible kids. Right. They're not born. Kids aren't born responsible. Okay. That's not, that's not how they're born. Okay. It's our job to do that. So. I agree with you, Bill. These young adults, that's who I'm speaking of, getting pulled over and stuff, and, and want to, not just pulled over, everything in life, they want to point at everyone else, right? Again, let's go back to St. Saint, Saint, uh, Stallone. Stallone. I almost said St. Boa. Um, and what he's talking about in that same speech about wanting to point the finger somewhere else, you know? Right. And, that's, and that's not what you do. I know we're talking about the amendments, but listen, folks, you're going to have to you're going to have to look in the mirror, and you're going to have to take responsibility for yourself, and uh, you're going to have to make sure that you're raising your children to, to be responsible people and to put it on their shoulders and not other folks. The, these amendments are here to protect us, right? not to hide behind. Two different things. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I didn't cross the line there with anyone. I'm not trying to irritate anyone, but I want to make it clear. And, and too many times we try to twist our, our laws and twist our uh, rights to fit us. Just like we're complaining about our politicians earlier, uh, it's not they're not meant to be twisted. They're meant to be protect us. Right. And what did you say that John Adams said? Well, well, essentially that the the Constitution only works for an upright and moral citizenry. Exactly, exactly. And that's and that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with these as we read these amendments. Let's use some common sense here. All right, sorry, tangent. No, no, it's tangent good. Over. No, it's all good. But <clears throat> amendment number five. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service, in time of war, or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled to in any criminal case, to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. There's a lot there. Holy this, moly. This is an important amendment. So is this the one, Bill, where people say, I plead the fifth? Exactly. Ah, Exactly. So look, so I want to break this down. There's a couple big things to take note. First, uh, the right to be indicted by an impartial grand jury, essentially, you know, a right to trial by your peers. There is the right, uh, the right to be free from multiple persecutions or punishments for a single uh, crime or offense. Uh, it's also called double jeopardy, double jeopardy yeah. right? It's also was famously invoked with the O.J. Simpson trial. Right. Uh, the third thing is uh, the right to remain silent from persecution or criminal offenses. That one is you have the right to shut your pie hole. If you are in trouble and not say anything. Right. You have the, that right. You have the right to not talk. Right. Exactly. It's like you have the right of freedom of speech. You have the re right to no speech. Exactly. And that's very important. And, and that kind of ties into the whole, when they give you your Miranda rights, if you ever get arrested, whatever you say or do can and will be held against you in the court of law, that's when you just shut your mouth. <laughs> right. Um, the fourth one, the right to have personal liberties protected by due process of law. So what that basically means is you can't just be thrown in jail. There is called due process of law. If someone is accusing you, they have to produce evidence, you know, being tried by a jury of your peers, find you either convicted of a crime or not convicted. They can't just automatically say you did this and you're going to jail. Like they do in China? Mm, yes. Oh, that's good. That's a that's a good right. That is a good right. I like that. That is a good right. The And uh, the, the fifth thing here is uh, the right to receive just compensation when the government takes private property for public use. So uh, this kind of falls in line with the eminent domain we had talked about previously. For example, if the government wants to build a 
baseball stadium in your backyard. They can't just say, hey, here's your back. Uh, here, get the so, hell out. So, they should reasonably compensate you and then, <laughs> you know, take your So side. this was actually a, a big deal in Perry, Ohio, right here locally for us, high school, the new Perry High School. So it was a farm that was in this gentleman's family for well over 100 years, and he didn't want to sell the land in the farm. They bought it from him via eminent domain, and not like he'll have to work again with the amount of money they gave him, but... That's not the point. That, you know, but, well, but it's even, that was the deal. They, that's how it works, so, but right. that's, that's even, what it is. When, when they built the East Lake Stadium, I had an uncle who was living on 357th at the time. And he was literally like the last person to leave because he kept trying to fight it. And like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He was like, no, nah, I'm not. You know, now it's in center field. they give field. him lifetime free tickets? No, he, he isn't even around anymore. But that's not the point. He, they, they're like, no, people need to see a crappy minor league baseball. Come on, man. I like the captains. But uh, so did, was he compensated? He was. Now, you can dispute whether reasonably compensated is justly Acquitted to that, but I, I, I don't yeah, know. I mean, they're not gonna. They're not gonna. There may be fair market value. They're, for yeah, that. they're not gonna take into consideration the value of what it meant to you. So they didn't take into compensation. They didn't take into consideration for this gentleman who lost his farm that it was in his family for a hundred years for generations. Right. Generations. That's not taken into mm-hmm. part of that. They don't look at that. They look at what fair market value is. So, so I agree. It is. It was a little bit. It was a little bit nuts. Um, it can suck in some situations. That's the reality of it. Right. But, but at least they, 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 what's here is to protect them from just taking it from you for nothing. Exactly. Uh, which was one of the things that was happening under the rule of the British uh, over the colonies. Well, I mean, even in England this to this day and age, you don't really own anything. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you, don't, you, you rent, basically. That's how it works. It's crazy. My sister lived over there for a while. And, uh, and it's different. You, it's, you don't really own your land and stuff. It's... You do and you don't. It's really weird. Yeah. You you got to pay on it forever though. It's um, and not like property tax. I mean, it's hmm. you pay tax on everything. Yeah. So the Fifth Amendment is very important. It does cover a lot. You know the, you know, no double jeopardy. The right to remain silent. You you know the right to you know with them no domain to be reasonably compensated for the government taking a property. Um, you know things of that nature. And it's important to re- keep these things in mind because these are our rights. Yeah. These are our rights. These are what, you know, as American citizens that we are entitled to. Number six uh, says, In all criminal persecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right of a speedy and public trial by impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district all have been previously and to be informed of the nature and the cause of the accusation. To be confronted with witnesses against them, to have compensatory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the insistence of counsel for defense. So this is yet another big one, and there's a lot that encompasses that. Uh, trying to break it down. So the first thing is the right to a speedy trial. So you you aren't going to be thrown in some gulag for decades awaiting some kind of a trial. The trial, whether it be fair or unfair. Right. They, you, can't, they can't lock you up and forget about you. Exactly. Exactly. Which happens in many, many... It's really crazy how thought out these the Bill of Rights is. Yeah. What's even crazier is that we are cut from the same stock. We have just chosen to neglect that. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you think about the Bill of Rights, and a lot of people don't realize this, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights... This wasn't something that was written over a 50-year period. This was a bunch of dudes who got together and problem-solved and wrote some unbelievable stuff. Yeah. This this is, I mean, when you really think about how this all came together and how strong it is and how it encompasses what it encompasses and how rigid it really is and how clear it really is and everything that it covers, and it's how impressive. And how lucid it is at the same time. Yeah. It's impressive. It is. Uh, the, the second thing is a right to a public trial. So you you can't have your trial be held in some basement, some dungeon somewhere where nobody will be able to view that. A third thing is the right to an impartial jury. Once again, we in uh, the previous amendment, we were talking about a jury of your peers. You have the, you know, so, so the defense against you cannot stack the jury with people that have a 
maybe you say a bias against you for whatever reason, you have the right to an impartial jury. You have a right to people that have no opinion either way. I think this next one's big, this next point you're going to make. The right to be informed of pending charges. So you have to be made aware of what the charges that they're leveling against you are. Yeah, so remember, this isn't if you're detained, this is if you're charged. If they're arresting you, they have to tell you why they're arresting you. Exactly. If you're, they're, if, you know what I mean? They, they right. can't, they can't not tell you. They can't just put you in jail for a specified amount of time for a non-disclosed reason. You have to have a precise reason why you are being arrested or why you're, what are you being charged for? And if not, like you sometimes see these shows or these movies where like the police officer, you know, after like, I think it's 24, 48 hours, they never tell what the person is being charged with and they have to let them go. Um, you know, so essentially... The, well, they didn't charge them. Ex exactly. They have to decide to charge them or not. Exactly. Right? So, and, and the same thing, about, I want I want to, again, uh, I want to use this whole thing about the whole common sense, right, morality. If you are pulled over and a police officer feels that there may be some danger that they're in, they can absolutely detain you. What I mean by that is pat you down and cuff you, and then tell you. If they fear for their safety, they absolutely can detain you prior to telling you why. So if it's a situation where they fear there may be, you know, they're, on their, they're by themselves and they're worried that you may do something, let's just say that there's a warrant, for, right? They know that before they walked up to the car, they're going to detain you and then tell you why they detained you and then take you. But they can absolutely reduce the risk right. prior. Well, they can detain you, but for it has to... It cannot be for unspecified amount of time. No, that's what I mean. They're just going to, they can cuff you though, and then tell you why they're cuffing you. Number five, <clears throat> excuse me, the right to confront and cross-examine adverse witnesses. So right now, what as we're recording this, this is kind of big in the news because Trump's being accused with this whole Ukrainian thing of having whistleblowers. And his, and this is his constitutional right. These are applicable whether you Absolutely. live in the White House or you, you live in a, in a cardboard box. You have the right to face your accuser. If I'm being accused of shoplifting, if I'm being accused of rape, if I'm being accused of whatever, I have the right to efface my accuser. That is when, you know, the rest of these are applicable to. But you have the right to face your accuser and say, you know, Jason, you're accusing me of shoplifting from your store. Well, why do you think they have that in there, Bill? Why do you think that is? Well, so you can't just make up a, a story. And what, what happens... What happens when these bullshit accusers come out, especially, you know, when maybe they're going to appoint a Supreme Court justice? Well, I, obviously, so we're talking about Brett Kavanaugh. And like every single woman that was brought against this gentleman, you know, either half of them didn't remember or half of them had so they had more holes. And so she's in their statements. Right. And that's why. So that you can't just make stuff up right. and blemish someone or get someone in trouble or put someone in jail or get someone not to take that role. Um, you got to be able to face them. You got to be able to talk to them, and not just face them, but uh, cross-examine them. That's the deal. Exactly. You get to you get to question them. You get to clear your name. Yes, and that's huge. It's, and that's exactly what Trump's saying right now. Exactly. Nothing I wrong have, with that. I have the constitutional right under the Sixth Amendment to face my accuser. It's kind of like this. Come say it to my face. Yes. Don't know what else to tell you. That's. If you ain't got the balls to say it to the face, don't say it at all. Right. There's no clearer way to put that. Then the next one is the right to compel favorable witnesses to testify at trial through the subpoena power of the judiciary. Of the judiciary. So basically, what that means is so going back to that shoplifting example. If you accuse me of shoplifting at your store, I can say, "Hey, I was with Jeremy that afternoon," and he can be subpoenaed to say, "No, we were at this record store. I was with Dave, and we're having a cigar." He was not physically in that, and I am standing as a witness to say that this allegation being brought against him is false. Now, this is what's funny, is the Congress is trying to subpoena people to testify against Trump, right? So, in the same amendment, they're trying to play it both ways. Right. They're trying to say, well, we don't have to tell you who's accusing you, but, by the way, we get to subpoena people to think about how crazy that is. Well, or George Orwell called it double think. There you go. So that was more seven yet. Yeah. The right to legal counsel. I have a right to hire an attorney. I have a, you know, I, if, if you or I get accused of something, law is not our specialty. Well, we, we have the right to, you know. We all know this from Law and Order. You shut your mouth, 
and you ask for a lawyer. That's right. And um, this is why we have this is why we have uh, public um, defenders because uh, if you can't afford one, one will be appointed to exactly. you. Exactly. Um, because you have that right. So as a government, we provide that right with the public defender, and I think that's a pretty awesome thing. That is. Think, think about think about how that separates us as a country. As Once a again, it, it just to have that right to say, it, Bill, you know what. You get the right to defend yourself no matter what. Exactly. And once again, it just shows you the value that our founding fathers put on freedom. Exactly. In, in all aspects of it. Amendment 7. In suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Simply put, uh, this guarantees the right to a jury trial uh, in most civil uh, cases. The other amendments we're talking about criminal. This is talking about civil, which if you don't know the difference, criminal is if you break a law, rape, murder, theft, so on and so forth. Civil would be, for you example, someone. yes, or like a divorce, for example, or some, something like that. Amendment number eight, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. It says here, uh, so the first thing is uh, cruel and unusual punishment cause, uh, this restricts the severity of punishment that the state and federal government may impose on people who have been convicted of a criminal offense. The punishment has to fit the crime. Right. Uh, then we have the excessive fine. Uh, it, it limits the amount that the state or federal government uh, could choose to fine a person for a particular crime. So if same sort of thing, it just covers money. Exactly. Then there's the excessive bail clause. So basically, they can't excessively set your bail. It's got to fit the crime. It's got to fit. The so crime. if exactly. you if you shoplift a pack of gum, you can't get a one million dollar set bail a million dollars. Right. Now, if you kill someone, they can't. I said, but just to give you an example. Exactly. All right, so that's uh, that's eight. Let's go to nine. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. So that one's kind of an enigma, even for me. My research says the Ninth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. It provides that the naming of certain rights in the Constitution does not take away from people's rights that are not named yet. Neither the language nor the history of the Ninth Amendment offers any hints as to the nature of the rights in who was pre-designed to protect. So basically what that says, it doesn't exclude or necessarily include anybody. It's acceptable to all. Boom. Boom. Ten. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Once again, one not as clear, maybe not as popular, what I got here with my research. So this embodies the general principle of federalism in a Republican, in a Republican, small r Republican, not a large r Republican. There's a difference, not the political party, but the system of government. Yes, we are a republic. A constitutional republic, not a democratic republic. Once right. again, that is important to keep in mind as well. We can address that later if we have time. The constitution principles of federalism in a Republican form of government, the Constitution specifies the parameters of authority that may be exercised by the three branches of the federal government, which are, most people don't know, executive, legislative, judicial. Executive is the president. The legislation is Congress and Senate. And the judicial is the Supreme Court. They are all separate but equal, essentially, is what they're saying. The Tenth Amendment preserves to the states powers that are not granted to the federal government by the Constitution, except for the powers that states are constitutionally forbidden from exercising. So in addition to that, what that also means is that states are allowed to self-govern in a lot. For example, there are some states where smoking marijuana is legal, and there's some where it isn't. Well, funny enough, it's federally illegal. Yeah, well, like in the whole thing when gay marriage was initially starting to take root, there were some states that allow that, and then there are some states that didn't. And that kind of gets into a messy gray area, but basically it says the states can self-govern as long as it does not infringe upon the greater document of the Constitution as a whole. And that's where it goes up to federal courts to decide right. if it's constitutional or not um, when you're fighting something. 
Um, but man, Bill of Rights, when, when you really think about everything that those 10 amendments cover and how detailed it is and how, how much it protects us of our freedoms as citizens of this country. And, and I'm going to throw one other thing out here because I just don't feel like I've gotten political enough. This is one of the reasons that I personally find it offensive that we allow illegal immigrants to have more rights than us or to have rights, period. I have family. You have family. We all have family who have died for these rights and to make this country what it is. Sure. And we have systems in place to allow folks from other countries to become American citizens. And hats off to all those folks that have done that. Read the Constitution. Read the Bill of Rights. Understand what your rights are and why you have them sure. and what that cost. The irony of it is, is that nobody is against immigration. No. And the irony is, is when you meet people that have legally immigrated, they're well more versed in these rights than we are. We understand this as a birthright, therefore neglected. People that come here and they immigrate into our country legally, they go through citizen classes, they, citizen classes, they go and they learn the Bill of Rights, they learn the, you know, the, Constitu the Constitution, all 27 amendments, you know, and because I'm going to exercise my First Amendment right now, some of the, some of the amendments are bullshit. You know, like they outlawed alcohol. And then two amendments later, they legalize it again. You know, Good. so the 19th and then the 21st. So, you know, I don't have to necessarily agree with things. The times do change. And once again, it goes back to regulating morality. But the matter of fact is that most people who are born American citizens completely take for granted these rights, these privileges that we have. And it's so important to learn these things, you know. And, it, and even in the heightened political climate that we live in, we throw these accusations around. This person should, you know, Trump should be impeached. Why? What law did he break? And this is, you know, when you're talking I don't about... like him. Oh, that's not a law? Well, that's, no, so that, that speech is covered under your First Amendment, and that's great. You are allowed to exercise and voice that opinion. You're allowed to gather 20, 30, 100 of your friends in a public place and voice your grievance. You have the right to protest peacefully. However... You also, you know, like in an example with you know, like impeachment, like you have to, by the rules or the laws of our constitution, provide indictable evidence that laws were broken, that in this in this case that a treasonable offense occurred, right? Or anything, not even necessarily a treasonable offense, that he broke the law in some way, shape, or form. Once again, whether you're the president, whether you're you or I or who, you know, listening to this. We are still entitled and we are still covered under those same protections and privileges. And those, once those are infringed, once any of them, whether it be the first, second, fifth, sixth, you know, fourth, tenth, whatever, whichever of those, whether in any of the 27 are, you know, once any of those are infringed, that is when the light of liberty, once again, that light, that flame is in danger of being snuffed out. Yeah, these are important. Um, the Constitution is important. We do take it for granted. Um, I would love for everyone to take some time and uh, do a little research, spend a little bit of time, read through it, uh, Google it, yeah. read through some of the amendments, understand what went into it and, and just research it a little bit. Don't just read it, but maybe research what it means. Like you can get free paper copies of the constitution. I was just at a, a constitution festival here uh, where we live on the east side of Cleveland about three weeks ago. I tell you what, I welled up because, you know, they had actors that, you know, were portraying Washington and Jefferson, you know, uh, Bessie Ross, like these, these people. And, you know, they, they handed out little booklets that had the constitution and, yeah, and, uh, and also had other documents that are, are, you know, equally important, like the declaration of independence, things of that nature. But, but I just want to say, know your rights, understand your rights, protect your rights, protect what everything's been built on in this country. Um, there's a reason that we've gotten to where we've gotten and we need to make sure we don't lose sight of that. And then we don't let folks take these rights away from us. Right. These rights are the foundation that we're built upon. And as soon as you start taking these rights away, like Bill was saying, right, we have historical data that shows you what happens when governments, I'll just leave it at governments for now, mm -hmm. start taking the rights away from the people. Right. And what happens? And I promise you it's a snowball effect. It's mm -hmm. not good. Um, you've got to understand them, think about what it took and why our founding fathers wrote the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. Try, try to put yourself 
back in the, um, their stuff, like, like Bill was saying earlier, and maybe it was last episode, about uh, when they signed the Constitution, what they were doing. They were, they were virtually signing their, their Well, death when they signed the Declaration of I'm Independence. I'm sorry, Declaration That's of Independence. Okay. No, no. When, when they signed the Declaration of Independence, they were, they were pledging their, their wealth, their honor, their sacred name to stand in the face of tyranny and say, you know, like, you know, kind of paraphrase William Wallace again, you can take my life, but you will not take my freedom. Right. Going back to that idea of Lionysus in the, in the 300, going back to the notion that freedom, you know, going, when we, uh, episode four, were discussing these are times of trying men's soul, that freedom is such highly valued of a notion that we just disregard it. And it isn't, and I can't stress this enough, and I don't, I'm not overblowing anything when I say it. We, the most public, the most pronounced, the most easily accessible idea of a country losing their rights within a measurable amount of time to where we are at in history is the rise of the evil access in the 20s and 30s. You know, Hitler and, uh, you know, the Nazi party and, you know, which, which was essentially started as a socialist movement. Those beliefs are antithetical to what our founding document is. And the more we flirt with these things, the more we entangle ourselves with these things, the easier it is to be deceived, the harder it is to break free from, and the more treacherous the consequences will be. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I agree with what you said earlier, Bill. I think um, we take our rights and we take our freedom for granted a lot of times because we've always had it. Yeah. And this is where uh, it might be good to look at history, and history is important to understand what it took to become free, what, what it took for us to have the rights that we have, and feel free to take a quick glance over to Hong Kong and what they're fighting for and why they're fighting for it. And they don't have it, and what's happening to folks because they don't have it, it's, it's a great eye-opener for you. We don't want to lose what we have, folks. You, it's really important that that we don't allow our freedoms to be taken away from us. Sure. It, you don't even need to, to, to look as far as Hong Kong. I mean, obviously, there's, there's a lot of valid cases to be made right here in America. But, you know, look at the, the, the English people trying to get out of Brexit. Look, yeah. look there, there's a huge conflict uh, on, between India and Pakistan right now for very similar reasons. And not only is China, uh, you know, encroaching upon the province of Hong Kong, but now very similar protests and very similar extradition laws are trying to be placed upon Taiwan, which is a, you know, a very similar province, uh, to, you know, to right. the China. So, you know, uh, you, you can look at, the, you know, there's now mass genocide, uh, once again, uh, going on in South Africa and things of that nature. So, you know, obviously the Middle East, there's been, you know, this is isn't necessarily a Judeo-Christian kind of a thing that we're talking about, although it, it is the ethos of Americana. I recently heard a speech given by the AG Bill Barr that, you know, basically he said, you know, um, uh, Americana, that the notion of the Bill of Rights, things that we're talking about, are based on the Judeo-Christian philosophies. And whether you subscribe to that in a religious basis or not, the problem is when you remove that, there has not been any kind of secular creed or philosophy that can stand in the place of that vacuum. Yeah. That's pretty well said. I think that I, I don't know how we top that. We want to thank you guys for for listening. Make sure you subscribe. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. We're everywhere. Uh, just look up Flawed Inc. or Flawedcast CLE. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Gab Parlor. Why they still allow us? Uh, Flawed Inc. CLE at gmail.com. Please hit us up. Uh, we, if you agree, awesome. If you don't agree, that's even awesomer. We uh, encourage and challenge people to respond to us that don't. And, and we we'll, are open minded and willing to examine things and look at things. And you, know, you have a debate, like you said, uh, you're, we would welcome if someone wants to come on. We'll, we'll talk. You know, it's not it's not this one sided bully pulpit. That's how that's how things quickly fall into dissension, and that's right now a lot of the people from the point of view I think where you and I are coming from, and I, I think more people than we realize. There are a, a bunch of louder voices in that bully pulpit that are trying to utilize power in any way, shape, and, and means that they can for their own evil purposes and agenda, and, and that. That is what we war against. That is what we fight against. Broadcast! Get into the arena. Bye. Peace.